MasterChef Canada's champions are here to inspire this season's top five. That's going to be me one day. And with the elimination of two home cooks on the line, there's no room for error. All eyes are on these home cooks right now. With time running out, it's the moment of truth for Andy's tart shell. Come on. How's it looking, Andy? It's perfect. It looks perfect. It looks perfect. Yeah, it's looking good. Five minutes for the top five. Becky's dessert sounds very complicated to me. It has lots of elements. I'm not exactly sure in my mind how it's all going to fit together. Eugene, he's taking the meatball and he's stuffing it into a tomato. Sounds very avant-garde, sounds risky. Sounds different. <laughs> Trying something new is always a risk. One minute, you have one more minute left, one minute. Top Come on, go, three. go, go. It's really hard to elevate a salad and a curry because the colors are not exciting. I'm just concerned that it's not going to look in the judge's eyes as a fantastic Asian dish. Good job, guys. Home Cooks, that was truly incredible to watch. We can't wait to find out how you did. But first, Eric, David, Mary, and Trevor, it's been such a thrill to have you here in the MasterChef Canada kitchen with us tonight. Good luck, guys. Nadia, please bring your dish to the front. I'm really hoping that the judges see that I have pushed myself out of my element. So we have wild rice, kale, fried crab, and fried green tomatoes with a bourbon sauce. Well, let's have a taste. The wild rice, I find a little on the under-seasoned side. OK. The bourbon, did you taste it personally? It's very heavy on wine. Not a particularly good version of a beurre blanc. Understood. The standout on this dish is the crab. That sort of light, sweet flavor is so unmistakably crab. But I find the other elements somewhat a little out of place, a little disappointing when you consider top five. Thank you, Chef. Michael G, please bring your dish up to the front. This is a do or die moment. This could be the last time the judges try my food. What you have here is a Thai inspired green curry, grilled poached lobster, crispy gooey duck, and Asian salad. I like the fact that you utilized as much of Eric Chong's ingredients as possible. That's a smart move. I love this rice. Beautiful. It's very fragrant. Gooey duck's perfectly cooked. The curry is just slightly flat. Mm -hmm. But overall, if this is a real standout dish for you. It shows you just take whatever's thrown at you and you make the best with what you got. Good job. Thank you. Eugene, please bring your dish up to the front. There's zero room for air with two people going home and there's nowhere to hide. I made a pasta and meatballs with a rapini on the side. The first thing I'm going to test is your pasta. You can see the size. It's very uniform. The thickness, you did a fantastic job. The sauce is a little flat. I think it needs a little bit more, maybe garlic, a little bit more tomato, actually. You should let it reduce, let the flavor concentrate. So I sense that amazing tomato. If you're gonna do a tomato sauce in a MasterChef Canada kitchen, it's gotta be extraordinary. So where are the meatballs? Uh, inside the tomatoes, I've concealed them. So is this your way of elevating spaghetti and meatball? I was just trying to uh, imagine a creative idea for making the meatballs. I like the pork, at least. Well seasoned, all that herbs in there. But right now, to me, this is stuffed tomato with pasta. Do you think this can put you into the top three? I hope so. Well, I hope so, too, because I know you want it. Thank you, Chef.
JD, you're up next. I'm nervous. Baking is the weak spot for me. It's a savory tart with charred corn, candied bacon, mascarpone, and flavored whipped cream. So play on sweet and savory. You received Mary Berg's basket. I think strategically it was a good choice by Becky. She's looking to win this competition. She knows that I'm not a baker. Well, look at this. The tart is beautifully shaped, beautiful golden edges. I would never know that baking is not your strength by looking at this. Thank you, chef. It looks great from the outside, but what's happening inside? That's what really matters, right? Absolutely. come a long way. It's beautiful, it's light. The flavors are all really distinct. The bacon, the pear, the tart itself is perfectly cooked. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. Terrific. Light, fluffy cream with some savory notes. The pear with the cheese, the cream, the savory elements. It's a really innovative use of an unusual combination of ingredients. So have you shown us that you can do pastry? I think I have. I think you have too. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Chef. I took that challenge and ran with it. And I delivered. Becky, you're up next. I feel pretty confident in this dish. I'm really happy with the presentation. Like, it looks really nice. There's poached pears and buttermilk, pears soaked in cider, pink peppercorn tofu, and cranberry curd with cocoa and bourbon. You know, Becky, you really have an incredible instinct when it comes to plating food. It's very sophisticated. Are you happy with the way this dessert turned out? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So, chocolates with bourbon, right? Yeah. Did you cook the bourbon out? No. Why not? Oh, I just wanted the full bourbon flavor of it. Did you try all the ingredients together? Yeah. Did you like it? Mm-hmm. Because I don't. The flavors to me are just clashing. It's one big clash. Try it. Cocoa's really bitter. Very, very bitter. Do you feel this is up to your standard? No. So thanks for being honest. Becky. Did you work with tofu much? Never worked with it before. Did you want to take a risk? Yeah. In a challenge, I could either get you into the top three or send you home. Mm-hmm. The pear cooked in the buttermilk works surprisingly well. It adds a different taste note to it. Do you think you added enough sweetness to this dessert overall? Probably not. I'm telling you, Absolutely not. Thank you. 